with the term winding down in the last week, you probably heard one of several narratives. Either you heard the media saying uh, this was a 6-3 supermajority uh, conservative juggernaut at the term, or you heard this was an incredibly moderate, temperate, uh, humble uh, term with a big uh, concentration of centrist jurists at the middle of the court. Um, or you heard uh, that this was a conservative court that wasn't conservative enough. So one of those narratives has to be true. Uh, and helpfully, uh, we have some of the smartest people uh, in the country to help us think through which of those narratives uh, is true, or if they're all true, or none of them are true, or if we're just in the middle of one of those Rorschach terms uh, that make it very, very confounding to say what happened. The most important change in the Supreme Court in the last year was due to the death of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg on Friday, September 18th, and the confirmation and swearing in of Amy Coney Barrett on Monday, October 26th. It's been often remarked that every time there's a new justice, it's a different court. It's especially so when you've replaced a very liberal justice with a very conservative justice. I think we should think of this term, most of all, as a Supreme Court in transition. The shadow docket, and this is part of what Erwin said, I mean, these are emergency decisions. They're not supposed to carry the same kind of precedental weight that a decision on the merits docket should have, in part because they aren't argued with the benefit of full briefing and oral argument. Um, but I think we are seeing the shadow docket being translated into the merits docket. Um, I don't know if we're seeing it explicitly, but you can definitely see it in some of the logic of these decisions. It probably says a fair amount about this term that the first cases we're going to talk about are cases that were not merits cases, uh, but were on the so-called shadow docket. And I think that underscores both that the main, you know, the main cases on what Supreme Court lawyers sometimes talk about as the plenary docket or the merits docket um, are not where all the action are. Is it, you know, and, and also they, those cases on the main docket um, sometimes can be sleepier than the cases that are handled in these emergency orders. That was clear for much of the Trump administration where the court was very active in these emergency orders. And it's very true of these COVID cases. So the arc of these COVID cases then also tells us a lot about the court in transition. And even within the six conservative justices, there, there are differences. One that we've talked about several times is Chief Justice Roberts is a somewhat more moderate conservative, uh, probably putting the other five in the same category is probably oversimplifying a little bit. Uh, it does appear that Justice Kavanaugh is trying to probe for that position in the middle of the court. He's been observed to be the middle of the court ideologically, but it may well be uh, a position that he is very happy to, to have and to play that, that kind of a role. Um, in a different way, uh, Justice Kagan might've played that role, but now she's part of the three, not part of the, the six. So a little, little hard to say. Uh, one, one cautionary note, certainly uh, from some quick commentary that you see, this idea that now we have a court of three liberals, three conservatives and three sort of in the middle, um, way oversimplifies the fact that that doesn't make any of that group of six we've been talking about anything other than very conservative. We have three justices on the court now, referring to justices Thomas, Alito, and Gorsuch, who would, any one of whom would be the most conservative justice on an, almost any court for the last 75 years. Um, the other three in that group, the Chief Justice um, and, uh, and Justices uh, uh, Kavanaugh, um, uh, you know, at that point, you uh, and, and Justice Barrett, um, We'll see how they play out, but they are very conservative by any objective measure. So a year from now, ask me the same question. We might have better information.